I'll answer the question. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. You know, I recently had Aaron Sparrow, a freelance editor, writer, you know, known for properties such as Darkwing Duck on the channel. And uh, we had such a good experience. I wanted to bring him on, you know, because I'm also greedy and, and talk about some, some more topics. How you doing, Aaron? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. You know, uh, besides your, your writing and editorial experience, I know you also do other industry work. You know, you do some ordering for stores and like that. So you, you have a little bit of, of more of base of knowledge. Maybe I we even let on in the first video. Yeah, I actually uh, I have a couple of friends who own comic shops, and uh, and so I do uh, you know and and well comic I should say comic and collectible stores, uh, and uh, so I do the comic ordering for them because obviously I I've, I've got a fair bit of knowledge of uh, of the industry and and being a fan of the medium myself, uh, I have a really good idea generally of uh, what's going to be popular, so. Yeah, they, they have me do their ordering for them. And uh, yeah, so I, I observe like kind of the trends and, and I watch uh, I watch Comicron all the time to see what sales are, um, you know, to see how the industry is going and, and, you know, follow the news. So yeah, absolutely. So you, you've you got the perfect set of perspectives. You've been an outsider, you know, you've been an editor, writer, and you're also doing, uh, you know, having to stay up on the trends and everything in, in, the, or in the comic industry. You know, so I wanted to talk about the health and future of the comic book industry here for a little bit. You know, if you watch comic book YouTube or a part of the online culture, you know, there are a lot of prognostic prognosticators saying the industry is dead or dying. I personally wholeheartedly disagree, but I do think it's slowly evolving and honestly needs to start evolving a little bit faster. In your opinion, is the comic book industry dying? I don't, I wouldn't say that it's dying, but it's definitely headed toward, it's definitely the Titanic headed toward an iceberg. And if it doesn't course correct, I think it stands a very good chance of dying. So I think that, uh, and, and just uh, let me let me um, let me clarify that a little. Uh, the two largest comic book companies are owned by huge corporations. Those huge corporations don't care anything about the comic book industry or about you know comic books as a medium. Uh, Disney, in particular, is a company that will cut divisions even if they're profitable if they aren't profitable enough, if they look at what they're spending for, and they're like, ah, you know what, what we're spending to produce this is not generating enough profit. Let's shut that down. They absolutely will. And I think that uh, DC is now in the same position with the, uh, the recent acquisition of Warner Brothers. So all it's going to take is one of those companies to decide that it's not worth publishing comics anymore and shutting down one of the big two. And then the direct market is pretty much over. So I think that what has to happen because I think that is a, that is a stark inevitability that, that those companies are going to do that. Or at the very least, one of them, probably Disney, will decide it's not worth it to have Marvel as an entity when we could just do what we do with our Disney characters, which is we'll just have some overseers in Burbank and we'll farm it out to another company. And Marvel will cease to exist. And I mean, it'll still exist as a brand of, of books probably going out to the direct market, but it'll be in the hands of some people in Burbank that work in the Disney publishing offices and oversee it and license it out to, you know, Dark Horse, to IDW, if, if IDW can even handle something. I mean, they're doing some Marvel books now, but um, this is, uh, I think we're recording this like just, just not long after they, uh, their recent fiscal year has been uh, reported and, and they lost almost $27 million last year. Uh, and that's not the first year that they've lost money. So, um, who knows if, if they'll be in a position to do something like that. But, you know, I think that we're definitely on the cusp of major, major shakeups in the industry. And I don't think comics as a medium or is, uh, is dying, but I think that we might be very close to the end of the direct market. So things are definitely going to have to change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I definitely, like I said, I definitely see evolution is happening. It's too slow right now and it needs to evolve faster or, you know, things, the, the bottom could drop out, you know, a bubble could burst. Uh, you know, one of the things we've been hearing for years is, the, is the dig, that digital is the elephant in the room that's going to change how comic books are consumed or maybe uh, do away with the direct market in, in the way that, that people uh, read comics nowadays. So far, that's, you know, proven to be false to this point. Digital sales flatlined several years back and are minuscule in comparison to physical sales. 
you know, in my opinion, current uh, interfaces make for less than a desirable reading experience as far as digital goes. What's it going to take for digital to become the game changer industry insiders have been talking about? Uh, you know what? Uh, number one, you've got to have a better interface than than we've we've currently got. Like the Marvel, uh, the Marvel interface is is pretty good. I've read some I've read some books on there, and and I've been fine with it. I had Marvel Unlimited for a few years uh, before I eventually just uh, just dropped out uh, because I didn't feel that uh, you know it, I was I was utilizing it enough to make it worth the worth the money that I was spending. But um, you know, Comicsology, I, I can't read comics on their app. It's just it it it, it freezes. It's it's clunky. Uh, I don't I don't enjoy it. So, you know, I, I, I think that that's the number one thing that's going to have to change is you're going to have to have somebody come along. And you would think it would be Comixology now that they're owned by Amazon. You would think that they would have the money to actually make it uh, a pleasurable experience to read comics online, but they just they just have not. Um, but somebody's got to do that. I think one of the things that would be really great would be if you could read comics from your Disney Plus app. I think that would greatly increase uh, readership because... If everybody's logging in Disney Plus and, and Disney Plus doesn't have, I mean, it's got all this Disney stuff. It's got all these cartoons and everything. But I was, I mean, I was surfing it last night, and there's nothing really there to watch now that The Mandalorian is over, and the other new shows that they're bringing in are going to be, you know, are, are, are months and months off. And and you know, again, it's just one of those things where it's like I can log in for a month, I can binge a bunch of stuff, and then I can leave. So I, I think that comics is one of the things that they could definitely put on that app, you know, and people could be reading them on their phones, on their on their iPads. Uh, you know, the tablets, then it would increase the exposure to a lot of people that aren't currently reading comics. And then maybe get those people to buy some books, buy some trades, because I think it was, it's a quote that's attributed to Stan Lee, uh, that, uh, where it says, um, you know, he's talking about digital comic books and he says, you know, digital comic books are, uh, are like boobs, you know, it's great to see one on a screen, but I'd rather have one in my hand. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, some of the, the little tricks like Comixology will do to you where you, you, you have maybe the first two volumes of, of, a, of a big important line and, you know, you read them on your Disney Plus app and you're like, wait, what happens in the next story? Well, I, I got to go to my store and, and check it out or maybe I need that Marvel Unlimited app to, to, to finish it off. I think that would work. But I'm, I'm with you. I use Comixology. You know, I'm overseas. I'm not only interested in Marvel or DC and, and Comixology gives me the, the widest breadth of, of reading material to actually read. And uh, the interface is is it's clunky. It's terrible. I can't believe that that is a, a owned by by Amazon. They haven't upgraded it yet, but upgraded it yet. But another issue, I can't get over the fact that a digital comic is the same price as a physical comic. Yeah, and I think that they are doing that largely to placate the direct market retailers, because direct market retailers, if it's cheaper to get it online, then people will just go online. I don't think that's necessarily true. Um, I still buy physical media. I buy, you know, Blu-rays and things like that. I don't want things on, you know, I I don't want to buy them from Amazon and just have them sitting on a, on a server somewhere. I know a lot of people like that, but you know, there's always that market that doesn't. So I think that there are always people that are going to prefer to have the book, you know, and be able to put it, but yeah, again, that's, and, and from the digital side, I won't go digital because I won't pay the same price to own nothing. You know, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't pay for Ephirma, you know, like, or, you know, just like things that are just, it's like, it's like smoke to me. It's like, I, I pay for physical things. You know, I play some app games on my phone. I don't give them money because I don't buy virtual items. And to me, that's what a comic book on, you know, on something like Comixology is. Mm-hmm. If I buy the physical copy and you give me a code and I can unlock it digitally, cool, I'll do that. But I still want that physical copy. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I couldn't agree with you more. You know, we, we already had our conversation where we talked about the lower quality of writing in the industry today. That's really hurting, uh, you know, sales and everything. But I personally think the biggest inhibitor to new comic readers, you know, on the market is price. You know, what can be done to fix the price point for comics uh, so they can become competitive with other entertainment mediums again? Oh, man. Well, I think... Uh... You know, like you look at uh, companies like Alterna, and he's putting stuff back out on uh, on newsprint, and he's selling it for a dollar fifty. And I, I think that there could definitely be books that are cheaper. But the problem is, again, these corporations own these comic book companies, and these comic book companies desperately have to prove their profitability. And since they have chased away readers, and they can they can't seem to connect with any new readers, um, 
they need to keep raising the price so that the bottom line stays the same or so that they look profitable. It's it's a shell game, but it's uh, the comic book industry right now is one of short term gain. Uh, it, it's like I, I liken it kind of to Atari in the 80s. It was like, oh boy, video games are popular. So let's just flood the market with as many video games as possible and make a bunch of money. But those video games sucked. You flooded the market mm. with a bunch of games that were terrible and the bubble burst and the market crashed. And it wasn't until the Nintendo Entertainment System came out that home, you know, home gaming like was resurrected. And I think that's the position that, uh, that mostly Marvel is in right now where they've got a flood the shelves strategy. Uh, you know, everything is just this huge maxi series. Even if you have a, you know, they have like, what is it like five or six big crossovers a year you know some of them running can more than that like yeah 10. yeah it's it's ridiculous all these events and nobody can keep it straight if a mom walks into a comic book store with her kid and is like hey we just saw the new avengers movie and you know we want to we want to read captain america okay well here's this uh captain america book that's written by ta-nehisi coates and has a bunch of weird politics in it and is not going to probably not going to connect with your kid at all. And by the way, this is part seven, so you got to buy the previous six. And uh, oh, and here's where it crosses over into these other titles. Their eyes just glaze over, and they look around the store, and they buy a Funko Pop of Captain America, and they leave. Yeah, it's crazy that they they can't get that price point because. But they, you're right. They're shrinking the audience down over year over year, where so they have to keep popping the the, the price up, and, and it just makes it harder and harder for new readers. And you know, eventually. It, it has to deteriorate to nothing, right? Yeah, I mean, eventually, that's the bottom's going to drop out of that. You're going to have enough people leave the hobby that comic book shops can't survive, which we're already seeing. We're seeing people leave. We're seeing comic book stores go under. Um, and I, like, I pity anybody who runs just a comic book store. It has got to be a nightmare. Uh, the only reason that the shops that I work with and the shops that I frequent even have comics is because they have other avenues of revenue that cover the fact that comics are not that sustainable you know comics is a very small part of what they do you know they sell collectibles they sell action figures you know they're they're a, a store that you know sells these other things and they carry some comics because you know there's a crossover audience there but if they had to rely strictly on the comics to make their rent every month they couldn't do it and that's sad because there used to be a ton of comic book stores and there used to be enough readers and that you know that could sustain them and people were excited about the things that were coming out and the creators that were on it i mean they may have always been crazy <laughs> you know but you know we didn't know it you know we'd read a 40 page uh interview in like the comic buyer's guide or something like that and be like oh this guy's kind of crazy but you know it, it wouldn't <laughs> it wasn't them calling you a nazi <laughs> yeah it's one of those weird things with with especially with marvel you know if you're a, a don't ever fall in love with a character or a series or a writer at Marvel because if, if you do, if you have a lot of affection, Marvel will just take advantage of you. They're gonna they're gonna spike a number one up to eight dollars. They're gonna do a huge crossover event with fourteen tie-ins to try and make you spend you know sixty dollars in a month or something crazy like that. There's just so many predatory practices at Marvel. It's it's disgusting. Yeah, it's really bad. Um, the uh... The, I, I think what, what really just like kind of like broke me recently as, as somebody who orders for shops is absolute carnage. Uh, that was probably the most interesting crossover they've done in a while. And it was because, and probably because Tony Case has been building to it in the pages of Venom, which has been a very popular book, you know, very good seller. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, now we're going to launch this crossover, you know, or this big event out of it. And people were excited and people were like, I, I want all the absolute carnage, you know, uh, issues. But then Marvel got in there and decided we're going to do 50 tie-ins and every issue of Absolute Carnage is going to have a variety of tiered variants and people got sick of it. People got sick of it very quickly. And so when they announced Incoming uh, for you know one of the shops, I, I ordered a couple of Incoming for people that, were on the, that had pull lists and then I ordered two shelf copies. And those two shelf copies are still sitting there because people are not interested in these events and empire's coming up and i'm going to be ordering very conservatively on empire and it's because of the mess that they made of absolute carnage with just overdoing it and just like trying to force you to buy all these other things that didn't matter there was a there's an absolute carnage series called um 
lethal protectors and it had some characters that i liked in it and i picked it up and i read it and i was like this has nothing to do like this is just a side cash grab that this, this story doesn't mean anything ultimately so i thought absolute carnage the, <clears throat> the main story arc was really good but it yeah. should have been absolute carnage like story arc and venom <laughs> because it, it in the by the end it doesn't settle anything it's only leading to the next event and it like it made me feel stupid i was like uh oh. i thought there was going to be a definitive ending in this but no it, it's just leading into another event yeah it's like it's setting up the next uh the next you know however many issues of venom that'll lead to the next big event which will you know just do the same again it'll, it, there won't be a definitive ending to it it'll just repeat itself and that's that's the problem because comic book readers are hitting the point where they're like fool me once you know but mm -hmm. they're not they're not going to go back they're not buying it anymore and you see marvel getting increasingly desperate with the you know every rebooting everything and everything having a new first issue and, and like iron man 2020 just came out like when, when that was presented as kind of like oh arno stark you know we're finally going to get arno stark you know and if you've been following iron man for years like i have he was always the iron man of 2020 and it's kind of fun. you know they thought oh the far off future you know of 2020 and now we're here and i thought oh they're going to introduce him and they're really going to get that going it's just a continuation of the tony stark iron man book which i also can't sell many copies of so yep. yeah they got a little bump they got a little bump on uh on iron man number one they fooled me but you know what i've cut orders on on the following issues and, and the next time they do this i'm not going to be i'm not going to be pulled in uh you know they just rebooted dr strange and made it surgeon supreme i ordered the exact same amount of copies that uh that i would normally sell i did not bump my orders at all um yeah i'm not doing it anymore because I, I, I'm the shops that i order for cannot be stuck with that inventory you know one of the last topics that i want to talk about you know a lot of critics on youtube myself included and point out the industry's uh, current obsession with promoting woke culture and personal politics in today's comics, you know, over good storytelling is killing uh, audiences. How much is this affecting the industry's ability, you know, to adapt and draw in new readers as well? Well, you know, I'll tell you, like, there's a lot of, um, you know, I've always been one of those guys who it's like, you, you know, if I, if I don't like it, I don't read it. Um, and, you know, when that sort of stuff like kind of gets injected, like I, I get it, everybody lost their minds when, you know, it, let's be honest, most creative fields are overwhelmingly liberal. And when Trump got elected, comic books lost its mind. And so everybody started writing these books that were their commentary on the age of Trump and like predicting, you know, what would happen in the age of Trump. And here's the thing. If you're a Trump supporter, you're obviously not going to like that and you're going to go away. But if you're somebody who's even remotely moderate or not mentally ill about the election, you and, and but you're you know you're upset about trump you're probably you live in that world already you probably don't want your entertainment to be all about trump you already live in the world where trump is on the news every single day you want escapism so that's what comics should be giving you is they should be giving you escapism and i think we just hit this this point where the people that are creating comics are so largely nihilistic about the future and about what's going on that it's reflected in their work and i i kind of liken it to what happened with I think that we could be on the cusp of breaking free of that, the way that the entire country was kind of depressed and cinema was really miserable in the 70s, you know, coming out of the Vietnam War. And everything was just this this dark and gritty and depressing kind of kind of worldview. And then Star Wars came out and was a huge hit. And it was because people were waiting. It was something people had never seen before. And it was also because people were just waiting for something hopeful. They were just waiting for a story that inspired them. And I think that's where comics could be heading if you know I, I hate to say it but if you know the people in charge aren't just married to this nihilistic worldview which uh, unfortunately in a lot of sense you know you look at their twitter accounts that the people in charge of these companies and uh it, it seems that they are so i don't know i'm hopeful that we can uh, we can pull up but I, I just don't know like these these companies i don't know why you're you're i don't know why you continue to employ people who or you don't at least you know make them course correct but i think it's again i think it's because the, the two big companies are owned by big corporations that don't care about comics and aren't really paying attention to why things aren't selling all they care about is the fact that they aren't and they'll eventually drop the hammer because of that you know so we we kind of talked a lot about you know uh where the industry's heading and things like that you know in your opinion 
what does the comic book industry look like in 10 years? That's, that's so hard to say. I don't think that it's going to look like it does now. I think that we are going to lose the direct market, uh, at least in a, in a, in a huge way. Um, I think comics will probably more of a, be more of a boutique item. Uh, you know, you'll see them at some collectible stores, you know, they'll order a smattering of things every month, every month, but it'll be, you know, it won't be from Marvel direct. Like I said, it'll be from Disney publishing, licensing it out to, you know, a company like IDW or a company like Dark Horse who will then be, you know, be doing it. It'll just be these really small niche items. Um, but I think the future of industry, the future of the comics book industry is probably with the rebels. It's probably with, uh, with crowdfunding, you know, with uh, guys like you who have YouTube channels and, you know, with, with like huge followings. And if you decided to do a book, you could probably sell, you know, more copies than you ever would if you put it out through the direct market and reap more profit. So in that sense, I think maybe we're heading to a healthier direction creatively because you'll have less corporate product and more independent product by creators that are, you know, visionaries and that have a passion for this again. Um, they aren't just punching a clock. So I'm, I'm hopeful that the, the medium will survive. Uh, I just don't know if the direct market will, which is really sad because, you know, so many people depend on this for their livelihood. And, and I know that I, I've always loved going to the comic book store and getting that, you know, that weekly fix. And, and I just, I just don't love it anymore. I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story if you got a second for, for me to mm -hmm. indulge myself here, but I'll just tell you from my collecting standpoint, uh, comic book fan since I was, uh, you know, since I was a kid and have been buying comics for 25 years or, or more. And, you know, weekly comic habit going up as soon as I discovered, like it started out at 7-Eleven, you know, which I think is another huge problem. The fact that we don't have comic books on the newsstands anymore. You know, if we could offer $1.50 versions that went out to, you know, even of all the big Marvel books, put them on newsprint for $1.50 and make them returnable again and stick them back in, in you know, your 7-Elevens and your, your Circle Ks or your AMPMs or what have you, you know, places where kids can find them on a spinner rack. That got me to find a comic book store. And then I began, and then I started my weekly comic book habit for 25 plus years. And I'll tell you where it stopped. I was reading Civil War II, and uh, I had, you know, I had my stack of books from the week, and I was sitting there, uh, you know, sitting on the floor with my back to the couch, like reading my comic books like I do. And uh, and my friend was on, uh, was sitting down watching TV, and she said she was watching me read the comics. And she goes, you know, normally she goes, you'd be reading comics, you'd either have like kind of like a thoughtful expression, or you'd be smiling. She goes, and like, I looked at you and you were actively like frowning. She goes, your like brow was furrowed and you were like actively frowning. She goes, and you sighed several times. She goes, and then finally I said to you, what, what, what's the matter? And she goes, and you looked at me and you said, I don't enjoy this anymore. And you closed the book and you put it down mm -hmm. and you got up and you left the room. And I tell that story because that is the last week that I went in and bought weekly comics. Like I, I got out for probably a good year and a half before I got back in and started ordering for the store. Now, you know, I read a couple of things here and there, but nothing like I did before. So I'm the prime example of somebody who was hardcore comic book collector, you know, comic book reader. I, I love this medium so much. It's been such a huge part of my life, but I hit a point where I was like, this doesn't, uh, you know, in, in the words of Marie Kondo, it doesn't spark joy. I, I actively kind of hate this now. And I had to get away from it for a year and a half and I didn't buy anything. And, you know, even now I'm not buying, I'm not buying that much and I'm watching other people do the same. You know, it's like, I'm watching the orders every month and I'm watching the things that get bought off the shelf and people are walking away. But I think like me, people have a desire to come back and all it's going to take is the comic industry to make some corrections, make the books cheaper, stop trying to extort us with all these variant covers, you know, cut back the events so that they're actually interesting and important again and are built up by editorial and you know these are the things that kind of have to happen to get that readership back and on, on the business end there's a whole other list of things that need to be done like getting them back into the hands of kids you know getting people you know introducing kids to this so that they can develop a love of the medium and, and and become collectors and become readers for their entire lives you know um taking a lot of the burden off the retailers uh diamonds system is you know the fact that they're kind of this crazy monopoly um it's just it's it's broken the system is broken and they need to do a major overhaul if they expect the direct market to survive and if they expect comics to be viable in the future well i want to say thank you very much uh, you know for joining me again you know talking about uh, you know, your thoughts on the current state of the comic book industry i really appreciate it brother
Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.